Okay, I've got to braid my hair out of the way for this video because you guys definitely need to see my awesome shirt because I had a great epiphany before this trip and I'm going to do this all the time. Well, maybe not all the time. It depends on how much I travel, but it worked excellently for this trip. I decided that rather than packing enough clothing for the trip, I was going to get souvenirs that were wearable, you know? So I didn't quite bring enough shirts. Uh, for this trip and I ended up getting a few and here's my favorite Glen Kenshi Hi and welcome to the book bar where everything bookish is on the menu. I'm Anne Jeanette Barr and ah, <laughs> I went to Scotland and I told you I was gonna do it before I made a video posted up here uh, all about my plans and I did it in July. It was fantastic. And I just haven't made a video about it yet, but I made myself like a scrapbook and I look at my photos all the time and I told everyone I knew about it and I'm ready to relive it again because it was epic. It was everything I hoped for and more. Well, it wouldn't be the book bar and it wouldn't be a, a, a video about Scotland if I didn't have some whiskey. We got on the, the coach the first day and I said something to the, the bus driver, coach driver, about scotch and he said ah you mean whiskey <laughs> i was like oh i'll never make that mistake again you're right i mean whiskey and i have a glen cairn which is a, a a wonderful shape of um drinking glass and i have become a little bit of obnoxious not even on purpose about how much i know about whiskey because you can't go on a trip about whiskey a distillery tour essentially in Scotland without learning more than anyone really needs to know. This distillery that we went to was so cool. Uh, it's called Blair Athol and it was in Pitlochry uh, in Perthshire in Scotland, obviously. And it um, has a little otter, can you see this? As the mascot. And I ended up putting it on my phone. Let's see how many things can I hold at once? got a sticker for my phone from there and it was one of many um <laughs> yeah I can, you can already tell this is going to be one of those uh videos where I just kind of geek out the whole time I apologize in advance um yes I we went to many distilleries I'll tell you all about them um but I really enjoyed this one in particular um it just had a very um I don't know comfortable um cottagey feel it's the, I don't know I'll explain a little bit to you about how the trip went and that'll make more sense but I loved we you know each place we went each distillery we got to, to sample um whiskey from their distillery sometimes other distilleries and I really enjoyed the flavor of this one but so here's the thing you can only bring back so much whiskey to the states and I had a lot of friends to buy gifts for so I ended up getting I mean I'm glad they had these like little sizes of all of the um the whiskeys that I that I brought home for myself and for most of them for friends and then I got a few different other kind of souvenirs like glassware and a shirt um, man I wish that I could have just purchased all, all of my favorites and then brought them home to be drinking you know from here on out but I didn't and so just I have to enjoy them little by little so one of the things I learned about whiskey is like the whole process of tasting it which I was really excited about because um, I've been to like a vineyard before, I've been to breweries, I kind of understand the lingo for those types of alcohol, but I, I didn't know the lingo for whiskey, I just knew I liked it. And so it was really fun to go on this trip and to get to learn more about it, so I'll splice that in here and there, but I'm not going to like, it's probably not what you're here for, so I'm just going to enjoy a sip and then I'll tell you about my trip. Hmm. Okay, so this trip that I went on was essentially um, Catholic history and whiskey. So everyone who went on this trip had to care about Catholic history and whiskey, or at least like care a lot about one or the other and love someone else who was there, right? There were a couple of like spouses that maybe they weren't so big on whiskey or they didn't care so much about Catholic history, but they were there with their spouse and that was that was really fun. There were 23 of us in our group, and I cannot believe what a great 
variety of human being while still like all being so like-minded we had. Um, every single person on that trip was just amazing and lovely. I will consider them all friends for the rest of my life. Like that's how cool they all were. Um, we all just fit together so well. So I went by myself. I did not go with my husband. So I was kind of one of the singles, even though I'm not single. And there were a couple of other singles and then there were a lot of couples. So it was like a good variety of men and women, um, of a good variety of ages and just so cool. The fact that most of us were Catholic was really neat because, um, we all, you know, understood where we were coming from, not just being interested in the, the history of the time and the place, but like this very specific stories of Catholics in Scotland. So that was really neat. Um, and basically what we did was, I'm going to show you a couple books. Haley Stewart, the author of this book and lots of others, organized this group through select international tours um, and kind of decided with it what she wanted to do um, with her husband, who is a distiller. So you're seeing where the, where, where that other side comes in. Plus, I mean, Scotland. And, um, and then the, the tour company like took care of things like the accommodations and the coach and, you know, the scheduling and our tour guide who was also amazing. Like our tour guide was so great. I mean, I personally feel like, um, she may not have known what she signed up for, <laughs> but she was perfect for us. So Adriana, um, yeah, it was, it was, it was perfect. She knew so much about everything well beyond the scope of what our tour covered. She would give us extra information about everything that I just thought was awesome, especially because she's like uh, a little bit of a botany geek like me. I mean, what am I not a geek about, but she knew about the, the local plant life and she, she knew about what was in the gardens. We visited so many gardens and I always knew I could ask her and she would know that was, that was perfect. Anyway, Haley, um, you know, has a great following. Um, she's created a community, uh, of people who are bookish, a lot of them moms and Catholic, um, and, you know, variations of that, um, not, not all at once. And so she just, you know, put out there that this is what she was doing. And then, you know, we all signed up and, um, and some people had a couple of other things that they were interested in, like a couple of people liked golf. Um, some of us like had specific, Oh, like Outlander, you know, was something that, that I liked that not everyone liked. And so there were some things that like not everyone was excited about all of it, but the main core of the trip was Catholic history and whiskey. So she was one author that was there. And another author was Father Harrison, who has written this book called Mysterion. And um, he was one of two priests that we had with us. So every day we had, we got to have mass except for one day, which was Unfortunately, they just didn't have the right things for us to have mass, but you know, we all were still together. Um, we got to have mass every day in these awesome places. Some of them were really, really fancy and historic. And some of them were just really great, like neighborhood parishes that we got to see this huge variety. We got to meet other priests. We got to meet some sisters, like super cool on just the daily Catholic living aspect of having two priests with us to chat with and just be friends with and also get to have mass. So that was really cool. Every day we had like that little segment. And then every day we visited one or more, sometimes a lot more historic sites all over Scotland. And then most days we did something with whiskey. And if not, we added it in ourselves. It's a good segue here. So I don't know if you know this, Oh, first, hang on. I also got this from there. <laughs> it's like, I won't show you any of the notes I've taken, but can you see this? It's like tasting notes. There we go. So cool. So every new whiskey I try, I can record it in my little journal. It's this whole new world open to me that I, it, I, it was exactly what I wanted. I wanted, I wanted to know things that I didn't so that when people are speaking about whiskey, I can at least understand them, if not respond intelligently. But I learned all sorts of cool things about like the tears, like it's basically the oil content you can see. And of course I learned like different tasting notes and, and smells. And, you know, when people say like, it's smoky or it's caramel or it tastes like vanilla, um, learned about like 
what makes that true because there's only three ingredients in whiskey it's water barley and yeast so um why do they all have different flavors like i got to learn a lot of cool stuff um along the way in our tour so we started in edinburgh and then we went north and we kind of meandered in the central part of scotland did a little bit in the highlands we really wanted to go to the hebrides that was kind of part of the original itinerary that didn't happen because of covid -y things and then thankfully no one on the trip got COVID. Oh, it was such a prayer answered. Um, and then we ended in Edinburgh again. So we didn't make it to Glasgow. We didn't make it up north and we didn't make it to the Hebrides, but really huge swath of Scotland um, otherwise. And we had like a dedicated coach so that we could keep our stuff on the coach as we traveled. And we, um, uh, I think we had three, three or four hotels, but you know, there's, there's lots of Oh, let me show you. This is my favorite purchase besides the whiskey. This is the whiskey map. <laughs> I apologize if you were here for the books. <laughs> but maps are kind of a bookish thing, right? It's the same kind of obsession. All right. So this map shows most of the distilleries, there's probably others that didn't make it onto the map at the time of the printing. And you can see that there's kind of a region, the Speyside region that a lot of people are familiar with, um, that's in the um, highlands, but like not, you know, this is Inverness and uh, it's over here. And then the lowlands um, don't have quite as many. And then this middle region right here have quite a few. And then Isla was where we were supposed to go and the Hebrides have a lot and that's where a lot of the smoky peaty um whiskeys are from and um yeah and then you've got the orkneys and other places as well and they all pretty much have distilleries they're, they're kind of everywhere <laughs> but um we visited a lot of distilleries in like the tayside perth area up along the um the coast the eastern coast and then the um the Speyside area so I have this and I haven't marked it. I'm kind of trying to decide what I should do. Like, should I mark the ones I've been to and then frame it or frame it and then mark them or just keep it in this cool, it's folded and it has a folder. Um, you know, I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this yet. I got a couple of these for friends too because I just thought they were the coolest thing and I'm sure I could find them online to order more. So maybe I need multiple. Anyway. Um, Yes, so we visited lots of different distilleries. I think nine or ten in ten days. There's a lot of whiskey. And um, the first one that we went to was the Johnny Walker Experience, which is not a distillery. It is a, a tourist attraction, really. Um, but they talk about Johnny Walker, which is a familiar name if you drink whiskey. Um, and how he enterprised in Scotland to basically support local whiskey makers and bring about this kind of phenomenon. And, and not that he was the sole person doing this, but he made blends kind of more acceptable, brought, um, brought other different distilleries together to blend things like provided capital for certain people to continue distilling. And so it's kind of like a, um, an interactive presentation about his life and all of the Johnny Walker conglomerate. I don't know if that's the right word of distilleries. Um, and that's the only one that we went to that wasn't a true distillery, but we got to taste a lot of different whiskeys there, which actually was pretty stinking cool and learn about the science of blending, which was another thing I was super curious about. And we went to, all kinds of amazing sites that um, have inspired literature. So all along the way, our stops were peppered with distillery, churches, and sites, including <clears throat> Edinburgh Castle, of course, Balmoral, and Holyrood House. So three different like palaces. Oh, and Stirling Castle. A lot of castles. <laughs> which was so cool. And, you know, if you've done any kind of historical fiction reading about Scotland or Britain, anywhere in the region, honestly, because they're all related to each other as European monarchs, you know about some of the Scottish monarchs and um, 
very, very cool to learn more about Queen Mary of Scots, my patron saint, Queen Margaret, um, and, um, you know, all kinds of others. Like, like I, def I need to go back and read everything I've ever read because I have so much more insight now. Um, Macbeth, like anything, you know, like anything I've read that like touched Scotland, I'm going to understand better now. So I'm super excited to continue reading. So tell me, even if you, if you commented on the last video about what I should read, um, before I go to Scotland, like tell me more now, because I did order, um, oh, I didn't, I didn't pull these out to show you. Well, I'm afraid I won't be able to find them, but I did order some, um, some books, biographies about some of these people that I learned about that were recommended by people that we, that we met on our tour or by other people in our group. And I'm excited to read some of the historical stuff, but I also did some book shopping, of course, and I was not the only one. It was perfect. Father Harrison in particular, um, purchased a lot of books. I'm just going to say it. He has a podcast. I will uh, link below and you should go and empathize with him uh, about your love of books. <laughs> That's what I meant to say. That's what, that's what I was going to say all along. But I love that because there were some bookish people, when we got to a place, it was like, where's the bookstore? So we went to one bookstore, for instance, called Leakey's. I don't know why it's called Leakey's. I need to look that up. That um, is inside an old church, like multiple stories and balconies and everything. And it's been turned into a bookstore. I'll put a video of that here. And it was super, super cool. And I only had like minutes to go through it. It was torture because I was like, how am I going <laughs> to, there's so many gems in this place. It was obvious that it was like, you know, I, if I looked, I'd have regrets. So I really just kind of, it was like those, those game shows where it's like shop till you drop, you know, <laughs> it's like find the things as fast as you can. I went to the like history section, the local history section. I had searched for a couple of authors, but I was kind of hoping for was like a really cool UK edition of some of my favorite books. But then I thought I can probably find those elsewhere. So I kind of ran over to the like collectibles and okay, I'll show you what I ended up getting. These may not seem super exciting, but I am quite looking forward to them. I got um, this book by W.T. Barr because my last name is Barr and I was looking everywhere for Barr things and not finding a lot. So I just went straight to the, you know, the bees and tried to see because I don't even know anything about them. But I was like, OK, I'm going to look. And it's the story of Dunfermline. And um, it basically seems like a... Uh, narrative nonfiction history of a certain region of Scotland and so it says in the book flap this is history written to be read not by historians but by all who are interested in the astonishingly astonishingly varied story of Dunfermline with its beginnings from its beginnings to its present day there are stories of kings and courts glimpses of the strange beginnings of coal mining the poetry of Robert Henderson and other bards the intricate developments of linen weaving the struggles of the, of the churches the stories that lie behind the abbey ruins and the colossal beneficen beneficences of Carnegie it's a fat Carnegie sorry I don't even know. It's a fascinating story in which the far off days of Malcolm and Margaret, so Margaret is my my royal patron saint, Queen Margaret of Scotland, who was not Scottish, by the way, but was the Queen of Scotland, um, become as real and vivid as the present day glories of Pitt and Creef Park, which of course I have no reference for, but it's signed. So I grabbed this one. I was like, okay, doesn't even matter. This one's mine. And then I also got this, uh, the Queen Scotland, the Heartland, which is part of a series, I think, of different um, regions in Scotland by Nigel Tranner. And he is the author of lots of historical fiction like this one, Margaret the Queen. So I have a friend who recommended him as an author. So I was able to find this awesome hardcover um, about... Um, a region in Scotland so another history biography but by a person that I already know is an excellent writer who will probably you know um, share the information very interestingly instead of just you know rotely and then I got some art I'll show it to you because they were also selling these gorgeous art prints 
and then I had to just hightail it out of there. But there were a couple of other stores, and I, so I got a couple of other things that I'll show you. But first I'll show you the art that I have not framed yet. It's high on my list. I know exactly where I'm going to put it. Beautiful botanical art, and it says... Genuine antique print, guaranteed to be over 100 years old, colored by hand in 1869. So, yay! So, anyway, that was my snag from that awesome bookstore. But the bookstore itself was, like, the experience, you know? And then we went to several other places. We went to a farm store that just had a few books. Um, and I bought a couple for, for gifts about um, Scotland or... Britain, um, kind of like a, one was like a bookish tour, like a tour of, of the islands, and it was like, um, perfect for my, um, friend Elizabeth over at Suitcase Full of Books. She got that from me, and then I got this one, Scottish Queens and Kings, the children's book, and Saints of Scotland for my kids and also for me because I have recently, here's some just personal news, recently started writing for Parables Magazine and um, it's a Catholic children's magazine and so my first article for them was about Queen Margaret because um, I just, you know, it was perfect and I, I it, gave my, it gave me a goal, pay attention to like all the things I'm hearing and then have like some footing to do some research and then write this at a child's level. And so I'm continuing with that magazine to write quarterly stories of saints. So that's a fun development since then. And the only other thing that I bought that was bookish was this pamphlet, really. It's, it's decently long about Queen Margaret's Chapel at Edinburgh Castle. So I'm going to put in a bunch of photos, but I'm going to put this photo, these photos in right now as I'm talking. I'll just scoot over here. It was so cool. This building has been, it was uh, built in the 11 or 1200s, and um, it's the oldest building in Scotland, and it's dedicated to Queen Margaret of Scotland. It was um, made by her son in honor of her, so she would have prayed and worshipped and lived sometimes in this area, but the, the chapel itself was built after she passed. Um, but it was so cool. Like, I think that the chapel site was a place where she would have prayed. It's just the chapel as we know it now, is not the same. That was a huge bucket list moment for me. I stayed there a long time. It was like, you had to kind of go through a line to be able to see it, and it was a very cramped space. I had to duck to go in, which was, okay, first of all, European royalty was all short when these castles were built. I'm 5'7", I'm not that tall. I had to duck everywhere. Um, and uh, I didn't, you know, one pass through was not enough. And I, I also wasn't positive I could take photos. So I had to go back and ask someone. And then I went through and took photos. Um, but I stayed there for about an hour in that little tiny part of Edinburgh Castle. So if you've been to Edinburgh Castle, you know, there's a lot to look at, but I really took my time there because that was really important to me. It was the last day, uh, last full day of our trip, gorgeous weather. And I just felt like I was going to regret not taking my time. So, um, other really cool bookish things about Scotland that I did not expect. Um, they like worship. <laughs> they, okay, so first of all, full disclaimer, I'm like 30% Scottish, so I'm saying they because I do not live in Scotland, but I really felt like kindred spirit with these people, <laughs> um, for lots of reasons, but like worship their authors. So our tour guide and tons of other people that I talked to were constantly saying things like, Sir Walter Scott did that. <laughs> I was like, oh, first of all, super cool that throughout time, authors have had an impact. And I, that's true of every country. It's, well, maybe not every, but like, it's very true of the United States and other countries I've been to. A lot of times, artists, including writers, have been, you know, motivators for change. And so I, I wasn't, I shouldn't have been so surprised, but just the fact that common people I spoke to who weren't bookish people still were like, well, that's because Sir Walter Scott was like, no, we need the crown jewels. And then we got the crown jewels. And I'm like, really? Wow. Like celebrity status in a way that we don't often see authors rise to, to be able to influence. Now, I, I'm sure that if I examined the United States from the outside and, and, and our history, and that would be a super cool book if you have a recommendation, Authors Who Changed History, I want to know. Um, 
but it just seems like a lot of authors in Scotland had like major impact. So I'm going to put a few photos that I took, um, or that I found like just of the places. It's funny. There was like multiple cafes and sites that were all named after things. And just, it was not hard to find bookish, um, sites to go to. And so I mentioned Outlander. I promise I will eventually do an Outlander post uh, video. It's like I've had to really get my mind around what I want to say because I know you guys are going to be opinionated <laughs> and, and rightly so. Um, but um, there were several Outlander things, but this was the most fun. That last day that I was in Edinburgh, we all split up. So I was able to stay at Edinburgh Castle for a long time. And then we just like walked around the city by foot, which Edinburgh's kind of awesome, you guys. Like I asked our tour guide, are there places that I should kind of be careful of walking by myself? You know, you know, I'm looking at the map and I want to go way up here. Is that going to be a problem? And she was like, no, no, you're fine. <laughs> like there's not a problem here. Walk wherever you want to walk. And I'm like, a anywhere? <laughs> She's like, yeah. I'm like, all right, great. I'm going to do that. Um, so on that last day, I needed to get from Edinburgh Castle to a rock climbing gym because my husband. And the only thing he asked me for was a rock climbing gym shirt from Scotland. <laughs> and of course, we're not stopping at rock climbing gyms. So I walked several miles through neighborhoods, which was really cool in and of itself to get to this rock climbing gym. And on the way there, I was like, surely there's something I want to see between here and there. And I was kind of done with like souvenir shopping and kind of touristy places because I'm not I mean, the history sites were really cool. The museums were really cool. The, the castles were certainly touristy, but I'm not one to stop into every tourist shop just to see what there is or spend a lot of money just because I'm there or whatever, right? So what can I see? So <laughs> I type in Outlander on Google Maps. Just, just, you know, who knows? Maybe there's something and I'm not going to go out of my way, but like if it's there, because yes, anyway. <laughs> You can take Outlander tours. Like if that's what you want to do, you can just do outlander -y things, but it's not why I was there. And sprinkled along the map on Google Maps are like Outlander filming site, historical site based on Outlander books. Like, yeah, everywhere. It's a total surprise. I didn't do any previous research about this. And one of them was the place that is, um, uh, I can't remember the name of it. I'll find it and I'll, I'll put it here or you'll just see it a little alleyway close, right? Where they, um, filmed the print shop scene. So this is the film, not the book, but you know, it's all wrapped up together. Um, so they filmed in this old alleyway. That's just pretty much like it would have been in the 1700s. Um, the scene where Claire goes and finds Jamie after their long separation and he's running this print shop. Okay. So I went there. <laughs> So not only was it delightful to be there and be like, ah, oh, I do recognize this. Like, oh my gosh, this is the place. And I can picture it in my head. And of course, you know, the, the miracle of cell phones, I like looked up the, you know, the screenshots, the still shots from the movie and from the show and compared it. And then, um, while I was standing there, cause I was the only person in this alleyway, which was a little disconcerting cause it's like a closed space, you know, just an alley. Um, more people come in. And it's the father or older man in the family who's speaking. <laughs> and he's telling them all about, you know, and this is where Jamie did this. And in the books, they do this, but in the film, they do this. And he's like breaking it down and they come through and it's like one guy and five women. <laughs> I don't even know. Maybe it was only three women. It just cracked me up. This guy is like fanboying out about, you know, this is where Jamie was and this is this. And telling his, I'm guessing, relatives, you know, all about how excited he was. It was the cutest thing I've ever seen. And he saw me and they were kind of like stopped and they're like, oh, because I'm like back there, you know, in this random little, uh, you know, alleyway. And I was like, oh, no, no, you're, you're good. We're here for the same reason. Do you want me to take your picture? <laughs> and <laughs> so we like talked and everything and they, I like stepped out of their way and they like, you know, took their photos and everything. And. Then they left and I was about to leave and another, like, so I've been there maybe 15 minutes and someone else comes through and it's like two women, I think. And, um, and they're also, you know, chatter, 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 Jamie, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and they're like, oh, excuse us. And they're embarrassed. I'm like, nope, we're good. We're, 
<laughs> we're here for the same reason. So funny. It's like this little secret spot where Outlander fans congregate without meaning to. I loved it. That was the best. Um, yeah, it overall was just the most fun trip and I learned so many interesting things. I want to go back like tomorrow. I need to live in, okay, there's this little village. Oh, maybe I shouldn't tell you. Don't go buy all the, the real estate. There's this place called Crail that I need to live in. It's a little seaside town that like, that's where I'm going to be someday. Um, Inverness is also super cool and Loch Ness and all those areas. Um, I did a lot of asking and looking about the, the families that I'm connected to in Scotland and learned some really interesting things just about us, like like the Barr families who owns Iron Brew, which is like, I don't know, Scotland's Coca-Cola slash Fanta, like it's a soda drink, you know, which our coach driver bought me one. It was so nice um, when he found out my last name is Barr. And um, the Rainey, Rainey is my maiden name, and like uh, found out a little bit about where the Rainey family would have lived and, and uh, kind of what they're known for. So that was really fun. And I'm, I'm a McDonald on one side, and so I learned a little bit about that. And we went to um, Highland Games, and I got to really geek out about knowing some of the athletes, and no one else knew the athletes, so that was fun. I got to tell them all about things they probably didn't care about. That happened a lot. Um, <laughs> I just can't tell you how much fun it was. Um, yes, I would go back to Scotland any day, anytime, in a heartbeat. Get me there. If you have a reason for me to be there, I'm, go I'm coming. So anyway, um, tell me again your favorite Scotland books. Uh, watch my video about what I was going to watch from Scotland. At some point, I'll have to do a recap of what I've read from Scottish authors or about Scotland because I still have some reading to do. I, I read as much as I could ahead of time and life happened and I have more reading to do and I will not get tired of it anytime. So, um, yeah, I will, I will make an update video, but I'll just close with a few more photos and, um, tell me all the Scotland things. If you're feeling this and you understand, then talk to me in the comments.